It's kind of a dull and overcast day. And so it seems to me that such a day would be just the day to stay inside and play around with some old radios. Here's one right now. Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill, and this is a six-tube Delco AM or standard broadcast radio, probably from some time in the mid to late 1940s or early 1950s. This is something that I picked up from the trash about a decade ago, and round about that time, it was restored to perfect working order. I used to listen to it quite often. These days I don't listen to it nearly as much. But when a cold, rainy day such as today comes around, it's then that I get to thinking about various and sundry experiments that might be interesting to perform. And this particular radio lends itself very well to an experiment because it is what you call an AC-DC or transformerless set. The reason for this has to do with the fact that here in the early days of electricity here within the United States, there were actually different types of electrical distribution available. Many people had 60 cycle per second alternating current, which is our standard today. However, some people, especially on the East Coast and in the New England area, still had direct current coming into their homes. And even if you think that alternating current was pretty much a standard, which it was, there were a few places, such as Southern California, where 25 cycle per second alternating current was the standard. I remember a Montgomery Ward vacuum cleaner that my mother had years ago. It was from sometime in the early 70s, I would imagine. It was a canister vacuum, and on the bottom of it, it indicated that it was safe for use with anything from 25 to 60 cycle per second alternating current. If we turn this radio upside down, I think there's still a data plate on the bottom of it. You'll see that it says on the bottom, although you probably can't read it because it's kind of far away from the camera, that this is a Delco model R-1235, serial number 10314, and its power rating is 105 to 125 volts AC or DC, 50 to 60 cycles, and it consumes 36 watts worth of electrical power. So. I've always wanted to try running one of these from direct current just to see what would happen. There are a number of ways you could do this. Oh sure, you could rig up a transformer and set up a rectifier, but that would be too easy. I want to do something a little more interesting. and I have no idea how this will actually pan out. But here as you can see I have a number of batteries, 9 volt batteries in fact. Many of them alkaline, some of them carbon zinc. All of these were removed from smoke detectors after they'd been in service for about a year. And I've been sitting on them ever since, wondering just what in the world I could do with them. And today, it's time to find out what happens when you run a radio like this from direct current. I don't imagine that it will run for terribly long, because 9-volt batteries do not contain a large amount of electrical energy, and this will probably pull down their terminal voltage pretty hard, especially at first, before the tube filaments have fully warmed up and the circuit has come into working order. Speaking of tubes, a lot has been made over the years of the unreliable nature of vacuum tubes, that solid-state electronics were a great deal more reliable. And back when tubes were in their full swing, it wasn't hard to find a tube tester in corner drugstores and similar places. However, out of all the antique radios that I have restored and enjoy, this is the only one that has ever lost a vacuum tube, and the filament simply burned out. It was the most direct failure imaginable. So what we're going to do is get some of these 9-volt batteries out here. I guess I should move the camera so you could actually see what I was doing. This is a dangerous thing to do because a bite from direct current, although there is some argument over this, can actually be more dangerous than getting hit by a large amount of voltage in alternating current. Because with alternating current, at least, the zero crossing point comes along. And, in theory, although the window is very short, that would release you from its evil grip. There is no such luxury with direct current. So don't, don't even think of trying what I'm trying right now. It's an enormously dangerous and unwise thing to do. Don't try it at your house, don't try it at a friend's house, and don't try it at an enemy's house. As you can see, 9-volt batteries have a terminal design that's conducive to their being clicked together. There's actually a video somewhere on YouTube where someone clicked together an absolutely obscene number of these batteries. 
I think they ended up coming in at well over a thousand volts. That's certainly enough to give you a surprise that you will not soon forget. Another cardinal rule of batteries, at least as per the battery manufacturers, is that you're not supposed to mix and match different brands and types of batteries, certainly not batteries that have different levels of usage on them. But here that's a luxury we simply don't have. And you'll notice I've been kind of clicking these together without much regard for what terminal voltage I've worked my way up to. I guess we should check that somewhere along the way because I would just take a random guess that I'm probably way high at this point. So we'll bring this multimeter over here which I just expertly put on the AC volts mode. That won't work. And we'll clip one lead here. And we'll clip the other lead over here. Okay, well we're still a little shy. Of course these batteries are not the freshest in the world. Most of them still have an open circuit voltage of around 8.8. .8. So we'll click a few more of them together. And I may actually go a little bit above 120 volts just because I know that when that radio kicks in it's going to pull down the terminal voltage considerably. So we'll see what I've worked my way up to now. I would strongly advise against touching the terminals on these batteries, especially if you have damp skin. Okay, we're at 131.1 volts DC. So let's just see what happens here. I'm not the bravest person in the world, but you'll notice I haven't prepared a fuse or anything for this. We'll make sure that the radio is turned off, which for some reason it was not. And then we'll just use a set of cheap alligator clips, which I'm sure are not rated for anything like this kind of voltage. We'll just put them on the power cord there. If they don't all fall on the floor, which both of them just did. I've got a real thing about stuff falling on the floor. It makes me very irritated when it happens. But alright, there we go. I want to make sure that can't possibly short out against anything. And I've heard that this arrangement is polarity sensitive, which makes sense. Seemingly if it doesn't work from what I've read about this, you just need to switch the polarity. Okay. Now, I'd like to arrange to have my multimeter leads on there as well. I'm not sure if I can actually get that done or not. There we go. 131.0 volts DC. So we'll just see what that does when I turn the radio on. Oh yeah, it pulled it way down. <laughs> That's coming back up. I may have to add more batteries. It may take a while to warm those tube filaments up at that low voltage. I wonder if those tube filaments are actually warming up. Yes, yes they are. They are glowing. But I don't think our batteries are going to make it. So we'll add a couple more. Hopefully I brought enough of these up here with me. I'm kind of starting to wonder about that. All right, we'll try again. Make sure the radio is off.
try again. I'm starting to hear sound. But it, it was there again? Was did any, did the wide receivers make any catches? Last week they had two in Baltimore. Gentry. Tanner Gentry. See if we can find something better than that. Oh, there it is again. I think my batteries have given out on me. But for the time that it ran, it was certainly an interesting little demonstration. And as always, I thank you for watching. Certainly look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments area. Oh, and just in case anyone's wondering about how long it took for this radio to haul those 9-volt batteries down to essentially nothing at all, well, here's their current voltage under load. And here it is turning the radio off. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much dead at this point. Given some time, they probably would recover. But I've gotten pretty much all the good they can give, at least as far as powering this radio is concerned. While I was taking this grouping of batteries apart, I noticed that some of them had become quite warm during that short time while they were operating. It just further reinforces the fact that 9-volt batteries are completely unsuitable for any application where a high rate of energy delivery is called for.